Good Morning Bimblers and you join me outside of Chester Railway Station. Hopefully it stopped raining for the day. We had to hang fire for about 15 minutes while the rain went over. We're off to see some odd little objets d'art here in Chester today. We've never actually bimbled solely in Chester before. So let's stop messing about and let's get on with it. Let's bimble. Life was left alone In days that felt so long Being on our own Was irresistible Thoughts kept to myself Shared with someone else Silently replied To most inaudible Between you and me Sometimes it was nice for a change Make believe this wasn't so strange I'm telling you my secrets again Imagine that you're still here with me Imagine just how good that could be I'm telling you Our first stop here in Chester is along the Shropshire Union Canal. It's a little bridge that appears to go to nowhere and is definitely from the distant past. The Shropshire Union was originally called the Chester Canal and it was dug in 1779. It used to link Nantwich to the River Dee here in Chester to get all that delicious salt out of Cheshire. The little bridge was built in 1793 and it used to link Northgate Jail to the chapel in the Blue Coat School. That was called the Chapel of St John. They would have led you over that little bridge if you'd have been sentenced to be hung. They would have read you the last rites in the chapel and then took you over to Gallows Hill. There used to be iron railings along the bridge to stop you jumping off and swimming away to freedom. But during World War II, they needed all the iron, didn't they, to make tanks and things. So they lopped them off and melted them down and they didn't replace them. That's because they didn't hang anyone here in Chester anymore. Just used to ship you off to Walton in Liverpool, or Shrewsbury, or Strangeways in Manchester. We bimbled there a few weeks back. A grim story surrounding executions here in Chester and jumping into water is that of the last public execution here in Chester. That was in 1801. Three men were took to Gallows Hill over by the River Dee. One of the men, named John Clare, managed to make his escape shuffling away in his shackles. Unfortunately, or fortunately, he fell into the River Dee and his shackles were so heavy that he sunk right to the bottom and drowned. You'd think that would be job done. The authorities didn't need to hang him because he bumped himself off by falling in the river. But justice had to be seen to be done. So they actually hung his corpse along with the other two men. A grim way to go if you're one of the other two fellas. The bridge was designed by a man named Joseph Turner and he also designed the Point of Air Lighthouse over by Prestatin. I think we're going to bimble there in the next few weeks. Anyway, we can't be hanging about here. Let's bimble. Where we stood right now is called Water Tower Park, which is quite disappointing for me because I was expecting one of those big Victorian water towers. In fact, you see a big Victorian water tower as you come in on the train. I thought it was going to be one of them, but it's actually a medieval tower that's just called Water Tower. It used to be known as New Tower, which is an even stupider name for it because it's clearly not new, it's from medieval times. 
but when they built the Chester Canal in 1779 they changed its name to Water Tower why is it called Water Tower? well prior to building that canal it would have stood in the River Dee in fact where we're standing now doing this piece to camera would have been a big loop in the River Dee they built the tower to keep their eye on the Welsh invaders coming down the River Dee it was built by Edward II no doubt on the advice of his father Edward I Big Longshanks we spoke about him at length and we visited a lot of his castles in what he called his Iron Ring around Wales we visited Flint Castle and Rudland Castle and Harlet Castle and Conway Castle I'm sure we're going to visit some more this year but for now we're off to the races let's bimble secretively Sometimes it was nice for a change Make believe this wasn't so strange I'm telling Telling you my secrets again I'm stood in the middle of Chester Racecourse Or as it used to be known, the Rudy Chester Racecourse is the oldest still operational racecourse in the whole world They've been racing horses here since 1539 And there could have been one-off horse races here from as early as 1512 Prior to the horse racing, this used to be a harbour back in Roman times it's where they brought all the boats in the Romans loved Chester I think it's due in small part to its proximity to the salt plains of Cheshire the Romans loved salt as well they used to pay the soldiers in salt that's where we get the word salary from and we also get the turn of phrase worth his salt meaning worth his wages have I said that before? after the River Dee silted up this became a mound of dirt with a cross in the middle of it and that's where it got its name, Rudy. Ru meaning cross and D meaning the River Dee. So it was a cross on the River Dee. There's a legend that surrounds the origin of that cross. The legend goes that the cross marked where they'd buried a statue of the Virgin Mary. Why did they bury a statue of the Virgin Mary? Well, they couldn't hang it or burn it because that would be sacrilege. And that statue of the Virgin Mary, a statue, was found guilty of murder. The legend goes that the wife of the governor of Harden, that's just a bit further down the River Dee, was sat in church praying for rain, and the rain came, and so did a large clap of thunder, which loosened the statue of the Virgin Mary, and caused it to fall on top of the wife of the governor of Harden. And she died, and a jury of 12 men found that statue, a statue, guilty of murder and they couldn't burn it and they couldn't hang it so they buried it here thus giving it its name Rudy if that's true which it definitely isn't it would have been the first recorded example of a jury being used let's bimble
I'm currently sat on an ancient Roman shrine to the goddess Minerva. There's a lot of evidence of the Romans here in Chester, but this is possibly the best evidence of them. In fact, it might be the best evidence of the Romans in the whole of Western Europe. It's the only Roman shrine that's still in its original location here in Western Europe. The rest were all moved to better parts of the town or into museums or private collections. This Roman shrine is exactly where it was carved 2,000 years ago on something called Edgar's Cave, which is in something called Edgar's Field. Edgar was the first king of all England, Mercia and Northumbria. He was crowned in 973 AD and he was crowned twice in Bath and here in Chester. See, no telly back then, you had to do it twice so everyone could see it. The part of the River Dee by the Weir here in Chester is actually called King's Pool. It's named after King Edgar. King Edgar the Pacific, that's what they used to call him. But who is the Roman goddess Minerva? Well, according to my big book of Bimble, she was the Roman goddess of wisdom, law, justice, victory and strategic war. She's often depicted as being tall, muscular and beautiful. A bit like their new gladiators, you know, Fiori or Diamond. Not a patch on Jet though, were they? Well, Bimblers, this is our final stop. It's been rather eventful, action-packed. I think we'll have to come back to Chester for Chester 2. So I'll have to name this one Chester 1. I couldn't come to Chester and not visit this. We've been to see a lot of these suspension footbridges before. In a recent video to Shrewsbury, we've seen many bridges, one of them exactly like this one. And in a video in Warrington, on my old stomping ground of Latchford, we visited another suspension footbridge. And those two bridges, and this one, Queen's Park Bridge, were all built by the same company, David Rowell & Co. This one was built in 1923, and David Rowell & Co became very sought after and very famous for building these suspension footbridges. I think I'm gonna to have to visit them all, although, they did build one in the Falklands. That's a bit of a long bimble, that one. 